Derek, Derek, Derek. Diamond, Diamond, Diamond. Experience! So I dug that song out of the vault a couple of days ago, and it was the first time I had heard it in roughly uh, two years or so uh, since the last time I actually used it on the podcast. And man, it really b- brings back a lot of good memories. What's up, everybody? Derek here with the Derek Diamond Experience podcast. This is episode 251 and the six year anniversary of the show. And Boy, is it crazy to say that. That's about six years more than I thought I would be podcasting. So what I'm going to do for this show tonight, um, well, for those who might be listening or watching for the first time, uh, let's see, we have Stuart Roberts, Anna Striano, and Emily Dillon in the chat room. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. So for those who might be listening for the first time, My name is Derek Diamond. I am the host of the show. And six years ago, I decided to launch my own podcast. And I had started, I had done a podcast before. I was hosting a show called the Nerd Cave Podcast with two friends of mine. But I wanted to branch out and do something a little bit different because on the Nerd Cave, we would talk about, you know, video games, the latest news and nerd culture. And it was, it's fun. It was a fun show. But growing up, I had always been fascinated by hearing other people's stories, whether that's celebrities, authors, musicians. Uh, Jared Cash has joined as well. Thank you, Jared. And I always was fascinated by their stories and how they got to where they were, more so, in fact, than their actual career itself. So I built up some connections because, you know, going to Pensacon. Uh, for that year and then knowing people from work and other people that I thought would just have interesting stories I knew I had enough to tell 10 episodes worth of content so that was my goal was to make it to 10 episodes and then that's when the Derek Diamond experience was born and here we are six years later and I'm doing still doing this show which is um, which is kind of nuts, you know. Uh, last week was episode two hundred and fifty, and it, it's really gotten me to reflect on how much time I've been doing this show, and it's been a lot. And I, I wrote a post on Facebook earlier today about how when I initially started the show, I was really nervous because I had never really interviewed anyone before. You know, I'd done a couple of interviews for the Nerd Cave, but not like really in depth like those were just five minute interviews but this was going to be something completely different and it forced me to get out of my comfort zone and chat with people and meet new people and through that the show has become my outlet in a way you know it's something that I look forward to every single week still I get a lot out of it from interviewing filmmakers to having roundtable discussions with, with friends and even doing this live show. You know, it's um, it, it's really become a pretty integral part of my life. And um, I, I did want to open up the, um, the chat room for questions. So what I decided to do for this special episode is I'm going to do what's called an AMA, which stands for Ask Me Anything. Essentially, no topic is off limits. I've been keeping it strictly to filmmaking uh, over the last year, year plus, but I wanted to bring that back this old school type of format for this week. And honestly, I'm not going to be doing it every single week, but I'll probably bring the AMAs back once a month, maybe, but it'll likely be, um, it'll likely be maybe every other month. But um, yeah, feel free to throw in some questions if you guys want. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be streaming for probably no longer than an hour. At least you know that's how long I would like to go um, because it is a little past eight thirty Central Time and getting a little bit older, so I don't stay up as much as I used to. I used to stay up practically all night working on stuff, 
but um, you know, working on videos, podcasts, schoolwork, anything. And it's um, now that I've gotten older, I, I try to go to bed around like ten thirty or eleven o'clock or so. Um, but yeah, let's see. I'm checking my phone because I know I've had issues with the chat room in the past where I haven't been able to see questions. So let's see here. Da 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 da. I'm not seeing anything yet. I really hope this doesn't crap out on me because I've been looking forward to this. So, um, well, while I'm waiting on questions, I, I do want to talk about something that's been in the news. We haven't been able to avoid it, but it is the coronavirus, aka COVID nineteen. And it's, it's been unprecedented, the fact that it's affected everything. You know, it's affected movie going because a lot of movie theaters have shut down. AMC shut down today. They're going to be shut down for, I think, six to eight weeks. or No, it's eight to 12 weeks, actually. And that's pushing back a lot of big summer movies like Mulan was supposed to come out in a couple of weeks and that's been postponed indefinitely. Black Widow, which was going to be the first big movie of the summer, that's going to be delayed indefinitely. And some movies or some studios are releasing content online early. You know, Disney put out Frozen 2 on Disney Plus early. They released Star Wars early. Universal is releasing a few movies early. So it's it's we're kind of in unprecedented times and um and I'll get to your question in a second. Um Gracie McDonald has joined. Welcome Gracie. And, and Anna can speak on this as well because we both work for the Blue Wahoos. You know, we don't know when our season's going to start. It was supposed to be April 9th. We were supposed to be full steam ahead getting everything ready for baseball in 3 weeks and now we don't know when it's going to happen. Major League Baseball came out and said that the season's not going to start for them until mid-May at the absolute earliest, which would put us, I would say, late May. I don't know when it's going to happen. My, uh, oh, Gracie, I'll get to your question in a second, too, because uh, we actually talked about that at work today. So we don't know what's going to happen, and that's actually going to affect the show because I had a plan in place to still be able to do the show while baseball is going on. Because last year I took the summer off completely because I just didn't want to deal with it. Oh, now the chat room's starting to get a little bit more lively. Daniel William Venn has joined. Welcome, Dan. So, um, oh yeah, I was saying about the show. So essentially what I'm going to do is starting in two weeks... I'm going to um, start posting weekly polls of movies that are on Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, and you guys are going to vote on what I review on the live shows. So I, the, the poll will start on a Tuesday and then run through a Friday. That, get, that way it gives me the weekend to watch said movie or it could be a TV show because I'm going to have the time now. And that's what I'm going to review on the live show. So I'm likely going to be doing live shows every single week. Because, quite honestly, I don't know what else to do. Uh, let's see. Well, well, we'll we'll get into some questions. So Anna asks, have you watched Little Women yet? Unfortunately, I have not. I really want to see it. I don't know if it's available to stream yet. But if it is, I will watch it this weekend. If not, I will find other means to watch it. Because... I'm starting to get back. So I go through phases of what I do in my free time. I'll go through movie phases where I'll watch. Like I did that during my Christmas break. I watched a ton of movies. I'll go through podcast phases where I'll do nothing but listen to podcasts at work, on my way to and from work, in the morning, at night, when I get home. Sometimes I'll go through TV show phases. So... I, I've been feeling a movie lately. You know, I, I watched um, I watched Honey Boy a few days ago, and that was actually pretty good. So I, I'll I'll watch Little Women if it's available to stream. Gracie McDonald, do you like TikTok? So Gracie actually introduced me to what TikTok is. I knew of the name, but I had no clue 
what TikTok was. It's pretty funny. Uh, there, there's these little quick videos that are really stupid, but they make me laugh. It's so much, in fact, that for our um, our pregame show coming up for baseball this year, we're actually going to do a segment called TikTok Video of the Week. It's going to be really exciting. Uh, Anna says June 6th for uh, the baseball season. My, I, I, I told her this at work today. I personally think we're going to start at the end of June. But who knows? The, this whole coronavirus thing is just changing by the hour. It, it's, it's absolutely insane because we've never seen anything like this. And really the, the hammer that was dropped was the NBA shutting down. And I was actually doing my retro gaming show last week when that broke. And normally I try not to look at my phone whenever I do any type of podcast, but I saw the notification and then I started getting text messages about it. And it was something that I had to bring up. Let's see. Anna says Frozen 2 immediately. I actually need to watch the first one first. I've actually never seen the original Frozen movie. It might be kind of shocking, but I've just never really... Just, I, I don't want to say I haven't had the desire to watch it, but I just haven't done it yet. Dan asks, should I grow a quarantine mustache? So Dan is, is, is sick at the moment. Do I think you should grow a quarantine mustache? Yes. Um, I think depending on how long you're in quarantine, you, know, you could grow your hair out a bit. I know it's pretty short right now, but you could grow it out a bit and then maybe grow a nice handlebar mustache. And just come back to work, reinvented yourself, and you can be like this badass biker type of character. I, I could see it. I could absolutely see it. Um, very rarely do I actually drink on the podcast, but I haven't really had anything like alcoholic in a bit. So, And, and it's also St. Patrick's Day, so I figured I'd make a nice little um, Irish mule, which is essentially a Moscow mule, but you substitute the vodka with um, Irish whiskey, which I use Jameson. So hopefully there'll be a sponsor for the show one day. Let's see. Um, let me check the stream on my phone to see if anyone has sent in any more questions. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Come on. Uh, Gracie, will I film a TikTok? Um, probably. Yeah, I would probably do a TikTok. It's kind of scary for you to pick it, but I mean, regardless, you know, either I'll, I'd let either you or Anna pick the TikTok video that I would do. Uh, do I believe in birds? No, they are. If TikTok is true, then they're essentially robots that were built to spy on us because so we watched this TikTok video today. Essentially, this guy has a theory that birds all died in the late 80s and they are replaced with robots that spy on us. I could see it. And with everything that's going on right now, like you could not script a better movie than what's going on right now in real life. Uh, let's see. Daniel, get dropped into a shark tank with a paper cut or run through an alligator swamp covered in barbecue sauce. Oof. So that kind of goes back to a debate we used to have in the press box back in the day. And that is, and people watching can chime in. Would you rather, who, what would you rather take your chances with? A saltwater crocodile or a great white shark? Meaning, which do you think you would likely be able to survive against? And I would say the shark because I've seen enough alligator and crocodile videos to know those things are evil. They are absolutely evil. So I, I would much rather take my chances with a, uh, with a great white shark. But Dan, to answer your question, I think, I think I would rather run through an alligator swamp because there's the chance that you may not run into any alligators Whereas if you get dropped into a shark tank with a paper cut and you bleed one drop of blood, then you're done. Let's see. Um, the Renegade Dance. Oh, God. 
I, I don't know what that is, and I'm kind of afraid to find out what that is. I, I'll look it up whenever the show's over. Uh, let's see. Who do the birds work for? Shouldn't it be who does number two work for? If, you, if you're an Austin Powers fan. Shark, just punch it in the gills. See, that, and you could do that too. You just punch it in the gills or punch it in the nose, and it, it won't bother you anymore. Whereas a crocodile, that thing will absolutely rip you to shreds. Seriously, that was like a, a heated debate in the press. Box. Like, that goes back to 2014, because I remember the promotions trainees that year. They would not agree with anyone else in the press box. Uh, it's crazy to think that all that stuff is now almost, well, I won't say almost a decade old, but it's closer to being a decade old than it is not, because it's past the half decade point. Uh, let's see what we got here. Yes or no, or Dan asks, yes or no, double your salary, but you hit every red light. Oh, God. Um, that actually, I would honestly double my salary because as much as red lights bother me, and the driving in this town is a whole nother subject, and I wrote about this on Facebook, that if I were to do another podcast, what it would be is I would mic up my car, I would hit record when I back out of my garage and I would just record my entire trip to work because every day I encounter some type of idiot that either slams on their brakes for no reason, they stop to turn, or they're just sitting in a red light not paying attention on their phone. That actually happened to me a couple of days ago. Uh, let's see, Gracie McDonald, let's talk reality TV. I, I see you guys are way more into that than I am. Uh, like love Island. I actually have no idea what that is. I assume it's an Island of love and that just shows kind of how out of touch I am with, with TV. Uh, if you guys want to throw in some reality TV talking points, I, I'll hit on them, but I, I can't get into reality TV. Like I, I know it's like the car wreck that, you know, it's so bad, but you can't help but watch. But I, I just, I can never get into reality shows. Not even like when Survivor was a big thing, when the real world was a big thing. I just could never get into it. Uh, Dan asks, if you had to lose one of your senses, which would you lose? Let's see. Probably sense of smell. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm almost at losing my sight because my vision is actually really bad taste I like food too much wouldn't want to lose taste hearing couldn't do that sight I've got to be able to see so I, I would say smell because to me I, I don't want to say it's the most useless sense but it's the one that I could um, it's the one that I could live without all right so here we go so Anna asked we will start easy Favorite Kardashian. I feel like you've asked me this question before and I didn't take the bait and you got upset with me because I don't really know who any of the Kardashians are. Uh, well, let me think on that one. Who's your favorite Jersey Shore cast member? Um, probably the situation just because he was so obnoxiously stupid. And I remember he was on a Comedy Central roast and he bombed terribly. I couldn't tell you which roast it was because it was a long time ago, but it was really, really bad. Dan asks, would you rather have to use toilet paper made of sandpaper or wear a shirt made of steel wool every day? Uh, that's, that's actually a good question. Um, see, a little known thing about me, I can't stand the feel of wool. Like, I got a pair of wool socks a couple of Christmases ago, and I could never wear them just because I, it's, it's like it makes my skin itch to feel wool. But would it feel like wool if it were made of steel? So if it feels like steel, then I would go with that. Either way, I, I, I just couldn't use toilet paper made of sandpaper. That, that would be... That, that would be awful. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, Gracie, Mike is trash. Oh, Pauly D. Yeah, I forgot about him. Uh, I'm, I might have to change my answer. Who is my favorite housewife? I'm going to have to start Googling all this stuff because I literally, like, I know nothing about. Uh, we'll, we'll go back to the Kardashians. God bless the internet. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. How many Kardashians are there? No, that's not it. All right, so it mainly focuses on sisters Courtney, Kim, and Khloe Kardashian, and their half sisters Kendall and Kylie Jenner. That's according to uh, Wikipedia. Let's see. Um, I would say Kendall just because I think she's the hottest. But that's just me. I have not watched a single I have not watched a single episode of that show. Favorite housewife? Um, the one from the cat meme, because she's the most famous. What would my drag queen name be? Oh geez. Um that's actually a good question. We were actually talking about RuPaul earlier today. I actually have an idea. Let me look up uh Come on, give give me one that starts with an S. All right, so I'm looking up gemstones right now, and I'm trying to see if there's one with the name that starts with S because I've got a brilliant one. Let's see, gems that start with S. All right, that didn't work. I can't use sapphire because that's that's already been used for another alias of mine. Uh, I'll say Susie Scapolite will be my drag queen name. More importantly, what would my 90s rap name be? <sighs> um, that, that's actually a very good question. Favorite, or my 90s rap name. Mm, let me think on that one. Would you rather get really famous? Oh, this is actually a great, great question, Dan. Would you rather get really famous for making terrible movies or make terrific movies that no one ever watches? I would, th I mean, I would say the second one because I legitimately enjoy the process of making movies. Like, I don't want to do it to become like a, a huge celebrity. It's just something that I love to do. So I, I would say terrific movies that no one ever watches. But hey, if I if I were to get famous for making a terrible movie, then I, I guess I shouldn't complain if that's the case. Uh, Anna says, Chloe. If I watch the show, I might think differently. But I, I'm completely going off of looks here. Uh, Dan says, Sapphire Elegant should be my drag queen name. I actually like that. I should change my Twitter name to that. Will you make Dan name his cat after your drag queen name? Dan, I think you found the name. You know, I think you can take the Facebook poll down. You can you can just go with Sapphire Elegance. Yes or no, you get $1 million, but you can only eat raw potatoes for a year. Um, yeah, I would probably do that because a million dollars can go a long way, my friends. And... Funny enough, I don't hate raw potatoes. I actually used to eat them as a kid. Let's see. But going back to the 90s rap name, let's look up 90s rapper names. Uh, let's see. We have Notorious Big, Tupac, Nas... I don't, it'd have to be something really terrible. I don't, maybe something along the lines of um, of DJ D squared, something like that. I know that's probably not. Which is your least favorite limb? Oh, Dan, we'll get to your your statement in a second. Which is your least favorite limb? 
Um, for me personally, probably my left arm because it's not very strong. I've been working on that, but I have, um, it's weird because whenever I do yoga, I always struggle on that side. I mean, I know you have a non-dominant side, but as long as I've been doing it, like I still struggle whenever I have to like, you know, do stuff. Like if I have to balance myself on my left arm, I always struggle to do that even still years later. So Dan says, I bet you can't chug that beer. Well, I guess we'll find out. I mean, the ice is practically melting, but let's let's see if I can do it. Ah, man, that was good. Let's see. Um, Tyler Watson has joined. Welcome, Tyler. Tyler, super fan of the Nerd Cave Retro Podcast. Anna asks, which of your eyebrows would you prefer to shave off? Um, probably, probably the left one. I wish I could do the thing like The Rock does where I could raise one of my eyebrows, but I can't do that. Trust me, I, I tried uh, plenty of times as a kid in the late 90s. And apparently now Dan owes me $5. That's not going to feel very good later. But um, no, I, I'm glad I did it. Very, very underrated. If anybody who's watching or listening to this, if you if you like liquor and you like Moscow Mules, get some Jameson Irish whiskey and sub that for the vodka. It is quite good. I actually like it more than actual Moscow Mule. And I went through a phase where I drink a lot of Moscow Mules. I actually went through a phase where I drink a lot. Oh, God. Um, Office Hunger Games is down to just Anna and Gracie. Who wins? Oof. Let's see. Oh, and Anna's going to take 10% for royalties. Um, let's see. Who would win between Anna and Gracie? Well, see, Gracie's, Gracie's got the claws, and I can see Gracie cheating. But I feel like I feel like Anna would be more strategic, and she would find a way to win. So I, my pick would be Anna, but that's that's a tough one. <laughs> How did Dan die in the Office Hunger Games? I was immediately killed by Bill. Oh man, that that's a joke that we've had around the office is who would survive the office hunger games. I feel like I could make it fairly far, but I would be like one of the last four or maybe last five. And then just a freak accident would happen. Like it wouldn't even be murder. It would be a freak accident that would kill me. Uh, let's see. Our, oh, Anna says, I already told you my survival food list. I'm not even surviving. I, I have the faith. I think you would, though. I will say I'm extremely disappointed in Dunkin Donuts because I I was very much looking forward to a blueberry donut. And I go to Dunkin Donuts, I go through the drive through. So and this is another thing, too. So an, a pet peeve of mine is bad customer service. So I get through the drive through. And I can already tell it's not going to be a fun experience because I can tell that the girl who's working there, you can tell by the tone of her voice, she'd rather be anywhere else but where she's at. So I say I'd like to get a half dozen box of donuts. And she's like, okay. So I go, I'd like two glazed. Okay. I say two, blur two blueberry. And she says, oh, oh you're, you're out of luck there. I was like... Wait, wait, what? She's like, yeah, we actually don't really have that many donuts. So she lists off what they have and ended up just getting, you know, some glazed and some Boston cream, which were still good. But I, I had my heart set on that blueberry donut and I was and I was denied. Let's see. Uh, Dan asks, would you rather drink a glass of your own urine or a glass of someone else's sweat? Oh, God, that's disgusting. But I, I would say my own urine just because I could not drink someone else's 
body fluid. And then Anna had two. Well, I, I should have made the trek to Gulf Breeze then. I know the the. Do I want to go buy Krispy Kreme in the morning and get blueberry donuts? I should do that. I might have to. And I, I already ate half the box of donuts that I have. I had that and a burger for, for dinner. Let's see. Um, so you guys have any other questions that you want to throw out there? Uh, it's 9 o'clock now, so I, I'll go for probably another another 10 minutes or so. And then we'll uh, we'll get out of here. Uh, Dan asks, would you rather always have a runny nose or always have the hiccups? Runny nose, easily. I cannot stand the hiccups. Though I've never understood, because I've never had the hiccups for that long, meaning that whenever I get the hiccups, I usually lose them within like five to ten minutes. But I've heard cases of people having hiccups for multiple days, and that just sounds like pure torture. So I, w I would say runny nose, just because I, I don't think... I don't think I could deal with the hiccups. And now that I've finished my, my liquor, I've got to switch to water. I'm trying to think. There was something else that I wanted to bring up. Um, did I vote today? Um, yes, I did. And... and You'll know what I mean by this. I voted the right way. You get 50... Dan, this is from Dan. You get $50 million cash, but you have to leave right now. You cannot say goodbye to anyone. You cannot tell anyone why you left. You can never contact anyone you currently know. Do you do it? That's a good question. I mean, Dan, you've had some good questions tonight. Um... Anna says yes. Um, to be perfectly honest, I would probably do it because I'm, for me personally, I would use the $50 million to make like some type of big budget movie. And then people would probably just be like, oh, he finally ran away to Los Angeles and finally did what he said he's going to do for several years. So yeah, I would probably do it. I would probably do it. Got $50 million. I'd be happy with $1 million. But I, I'm working on it. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Any, any other questions from you guys before? Haven't heard from Gracie in a bit. I don't know if she got mad because I, uh, I said that she would lose the Office Hunger Games. Who would be your primary sponsor if you were a NASCAR driver? Ooh, that, that's a good question. Um, there's so many good options. Probably AMC Theaters, just because I spend so much time there. Oh, yeah, Anna killed her. Well, there we go. Well, that's unfortunate. I, I will say, oh, killed her in the Hunger Games. I didn't know that was going on right now. I thought that was going to be, like, we all had to be locked in the office for that. Let's see, Dan asks, would you rather be constantly itchy or constantly sticky? Uh, mm, that's a tough one. That actually is a very tough one. Um, hmm. I would say... I would say constantly itchy. Because being sticky and being dirty in general bothers me. Like, I'm not quite a germaphobe, but I'm fairly close to it. Yeah, I hope Dan's okay. Dan's actually been quite sick the last few days. So Let, let's hope that, that Dan has a, a very speedy recovery. And he says, you cannot fathom my boredom. Uh, what is my hidden talent? I pretend to be a decent podcaster. Um, what well, hidden talent? I actually don't know that I have one. I mean, I I know a lot of useless movie knowledge, if that counts as a talent. Um, I used to be able to do a really good Ray Sayer impression. Ray was our former groundskeeper. 
uh, with the Blue Wahoos, and he has a very distinct voice. And I used to be able to do it perfectly, but I haven't done it in years, so I'd have to practice it before I actually did it. Um, I, I've got a couple of impressions that I can do fairly well. That and the uh, I could do Ray and the the lead singer from the B-52s. I can do pretty well. Uh, Dan, what's the best worst movie, and what's the worst best movie? Um, best worst movie. See, it's so subjective. Actually, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some facts behind this. I'm going to look up worst movies of the 2000s. Because I feel like I would pick a recent movie. I cannot type today. Let's see. Um, <laughs> Dragon Ball Evolution. No, that was just a bad movie in general. So I, I'll say this. A lot of people say The Mask is a really bad movie. I love that movie. It was the first movie I ever bought on DVD. And I love it to this day. I wish that... <laughs> we'll get to that next question in a second. I, I love The Mask. It's my favorite Jim Carrey movie. Oh, Brandon Rutledge has joined. Welcome, Brandon. Brandon is a super fan of the Nerd Cave Retro Show and was also on our Defending Bad Movies panel, which you heard on last week's show. Um, The worst best movie... All right, let's look up most underrated, most overrated movies. Most overrated movies. Let's see. American Beauty, American in Paris, Beautiful Mind. Oh, I disagree that Clerks is an overrated movie. Uh, worst best movie. Actually, I know my question, or I know my answer. It's Avatar, because people praise that movie, and visually it's great, but the story is garbage. If I want to watch that story, I'll watch Pocahontas, because it's a better movie. So I would say Avatar. Uh, Anna asks, if I ever killed Adam, what would it be for? Let's see. Uh, I, I, so, Dan, I am not talking ill will of the mask. I actually am a huge fan of that movie. Uh, if I ever killed Adam, what would it be for? Um, let, let's see. Disrespecting Star Wars would be an option. It would probably honestly be something like he would talk crap about something that I like and I would just snap and then it would happen. Would probably be would probably be that. Um, yes or yes, is Interstellar terrible? I don't hate Interstellar, but... So here's the thing, and I, and I will... I, I'm kind of going to throw Adam under the bus here on this. He has seen Interstellar more times in theaters than I have seen any Star Wars movie, so he cannot call me a nerd. Because I want to say he saw Interstellar seven times in the movie theater. Uh, why did we give up on Space Club? I don't know. We we should bring that back. I, I do miss Space Club. Uh, Brandon Rutledge, P please tell me that Street Fighter the movie was in the hat for Defending Bad Movies 2. Yes, and it will be saved for Defending Bad Movies 3D. Because I, I'm actually saving the, the choices that weren't selected. And I'm going to um, use them for next year. Is Bruce watching me? Bruce is always watching me. So... To, to kind of explain that question, so Bruce Baldwin used to be our CEO at the Blue Wahoos, and he was notorious for, during baseball games, he would sit in the section below the press box, and he would watch the video board, and if we made mistakes, or if any of the stats were wrong, he would make sure to let us know. So one of our... One of our uh, game day staff members, Vern, decided to have some fun with me. And above the crossfire monitor, which essentially controls the video board, he put on a piece of tape, Bruce is always watching you, Derek. And every tour group that comes into the stadium and comes up to the press box, they ask about that. I can't tell you how many times I've had to tell that story. Uh, more importantly, how would I kill Adam? <laughs> 
you guys act like I know how I would how I would kill him. Um, mm, I don't know. What would be what would be an absolute like torturous way to kill him? I would probably force him. I would probably lock him in a room and force him to watch Donald Trump's speeches on loop until he just withers away. Yeah, I think that that would be it. Will they ever make the sequel to Kung Pao Enter the Fist that they promised me when I was eight? That comes from Dan. Um, if it's not made by the time I make it into the film industry, I'll do it. You have my word, Dan. There we go. I will make Kung Pao Enter the I will even I would even let you have creative input on it. I would honestly take suggestions from you. As long I think the sequel though, like the subtitle has to be Stars Above. And Dan will know what I get when I say that. All right, so any more questions? I'm going to go about two or three more minutes here, and then I'm going to start wrapping up because it, it, it is, um, yeah, yes, I do promise. Uh, Anna asks, which Hamilton character are you? It's easy. I'm the ensemble. I'm absolutely the ensemble because I'm everywhere. I, I don't know who, who, did, who did you guys cast me? In, when you guys did your Hamilton cast. I know it wasn't like a huge character, but I love the ensemble parts in all the songs. So if we were to do like our our own version of um, of Hamilton, I would just pop out on stage, say the ensemble lines, and then jump off. Let's see... Um, Will I rap? I mean, if I were a Hamilton character, yes, because I would have to. Brandon, any plans for videos on your YouTube channel? I should probably do that. I should do some. Um, I should do some YouTube exclusives. I I'll have to think about that. Message me about that because I'd, I'd love to chat with you more about that. Which Hamilton character is Dan? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, hmm. Who would Dan be in Hamilton? That's a great question. Hmm. I'm going to need a list of all the characters. Da, 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 da. I don't want to say King George because that would easily be, be, uh, be Bill Valona. And you guys have to admit, he he would be the absolute perfect. Um, who who do we cast Luke as? Because I would say that would be my my answer for Dan. Uh, let's see, guilty pleasure TV show. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Lawrence and Philip. Yeah, that would be Dan. Or just cast one of them as Dan, and then Luke can be the other one. Guilty Pleasure TV show. I don't know that I would count The Good Place as a Guilty Pleasure show, because I feel like that show is universally liked, and I still need to watch the last season of it. I might try and do that within the next week or so, because I heard the finale, and I think Anna even told me the finale was extremely good. So that might be it, but honestly, I don't watch that much TV. Oh, that's true. Yeah, we don't talk to Luke, so we can't. Uh, we we can't do that. Oh, here's a good question from Brandon. Thoughts on the current situation for WrestleMania 36? Oh, real quick. Yes, pineapple does belong on pizza, and that's from Dan. But as far as WrestleMania 36, so. Um, so WWE has been hit pretty, pretty hard with this coronavirus thing. They've been doing empty arena shows now for almost a week. And they announced that WrestleMania is going to be in Orlando at their performance center in an empty arena. I don't like it. I think it's going to be really awkward that their biggest show of the year is going to be in front of an empty stadium or not even an empty stadium, an empty arena. 
but I get the sense that they have to do it because they're so far along in their storylines that it would be weird to just kind of stop. I don't envy the position that they're in because it's like no matter what they do, they're going to get crapped on. But I do think that after WrestleMania, they need to take some type of a hiatus until this whole thing blows over because they can't just keep doing empty arena shows every week because it's honestly already gotten kind of old. Like it was a cool novelty for SmackDown last week, but honestly watching raw, I was like, I I'm, I'm not feeling it anymore. I'm not, but I, I, I kind of get, you know, they got to do what they got to do, but I personally would have postponed it until the summer and had it in maybe July or August when they're actually holding events again. Uh, how many Sandy dogs would you eat for a hundred dollars? All of them. And how many not, how many nachos is too many nachos? Um, you can't have too many nachos, especially when you just cover them with salsa and sour cream and some pulled pork. I love me some pulled pork nachos. Those are absolutely fantastic. But um, we're coming up, uh, as far as a live stream, we're coming up on close to 55 minutes. So I think I'm going to call it a show here. This was a lot of fun. And, and as I mentioned you know, earlier in the show, this is probably going to be something I do not necessarily every month, but maybe every other month, or I might end up doing it once a month. I have no idea. Essentially, the show's in an interesting situation because I wasn't expecting to have the time to actually do the show. But now that I do, because my, my contingency plan was I was going to review the big summer movies like Black Widow, Top Gun, all those movies that are coming out during the summer, but with theaters being closed, that's not going to happen. So starting not this upcoming week, but the one after I'm going to, um, start posting polls on what I'm going to review. And you guys will decide on that. Uh, let's see real quick. Anna, can I use chopsticks? Yes. And what about mine and Gracie's takeover? That will still happen. I, I will let you guys take over an episode of my podcast. There, I've said it on air, so it's got to happen. So we'll we'll figure it out and we'll make it happen. We'll we'll have the Anna Striano and Gracie McDonald experience on the podcast. So there you go. It will happen at some point. So thank you guys so much for joining me for this special. A uh, six-year anniversary celebration. This was a lot of fun to do. It's kind of fun to just, you know, talk about whatever. Um, Anna says she's going to do it anyway, probably. But it, it, it's it makes me feel better if I say it on my own show. But um, yeah, th this was a lot of fun. Um, for those who are watching live, thank you guys. And here's to... Another, I guess, six years of podcasting is crazy. Next year, I'll hit episode 300. And who knows where it's going to go from there. And, and I wrote about this on Facebook earlier. But now I can't picture myself not doing some type of podcast. Even if I weren't doing this, I would be doing some other type of show. So thank you guys for the continued support. And for those, uh, Anna says wouldn't be the first time. Yes, Anna has hijacked my show before. You can actually go back on the video archive and find, um, I think it's Star Wars Night from 2018. And you can find the video version where my microphone is literally snatched out of my hand. It, it makes for good content. But for those um, listening on the download, stay tuned for my interview with actress and singer Sienna Pereira. And thank you guys for watching on Facebook. And here's to many more years of podcasting. <laughs>